What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome to the 19th episode of Tuffy Talk. Thank you all so much for tuning in with us. Please make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to us by hitting the button in the bottom right-hand corner. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and want some other NC State content. And also check out our other episodes as well, our things NC State fans never say. All fans have loved it so far. If you haven't watched it, make sure to check it out. Simple as that. And also, too, make sure if you haven't uh, followed us on Insta- on uh, Twitter or Instagram, at Tuffy Talk Now, bam, please do so. And uh, also, too, if you have any interest in any Tuffy Talk merchandise, make sure to direct message us. Uh, so on today's episode, we will be uh, doing a little bit of a weekly review. Obviously, an exciting week that just happened with uh, NC State oh, yeah. for NC State fans. A lot of good stuff happened. And also, too, right after that, we'll be interviewing the NC State sailing team. A lot of State fans may say, we have a sailing team? Yep. Well, here we that's go. Why, so, that's why Layton's wearing the sleeveless shirt today. That's right. That's right. In honor of sailing team, you know, sun's out. It's summertime. Out, right? <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, Wolfpack Nation, let's go and get this thing started. What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you all so much again for tuning in with us. Uh, please make sure, again, if you haven't already, subscribe to us. Follow us on Twitter, and uh, again, please, uh, you know, continue to support us. Really appreciate all all the support that you guys have given us so far. Uh, can't thank y'all enough for everything. So, with that being said, again, really wanted to take just a, a, a quick minute and just talk about this week because it's been a great week so far for NC State. I mean, wouldn't you agree, Macon? Oh yeah, I was. I would you know we were just talking about this a little bit ahead of time, but you know, you reminded me of some things I had not even really thought about. But man, this. This is getting town. You know, I, I look forward to basketball and football generally like most fans do. But this season, I kind of get geared more towards, okay, base, you know, college baseball is coming up, the College World Series coming up. But, man, there's some other teams we've got for state that are doing really well in the postseason. And I know we want to talk about those right now, but I, it's exciting. Oh, yeah. No kidding. No kidding. And, I mean, I mean, like for me, like personally, like, you know, one, one team that's actually playing right now is actually men's golf. They're actually – uh playing in the, in, in the NCAA regionals and uh, they're actually tied for first after day one. So, I mean, looking super strong so far. So, I mean, again, it's a team that not many people talk about, but again, I'm telling you guys, and we've been saying all along, we're all around pack. Simple as that. We're not a football school. We're about not basketball school. We're all around, man. We, we got, we got great teams all around. So a lot to be thrilled about so far. And even and like women's tennis, I know you were kind of following that as, uh, as well, making. Yo, yeah, that was, so I was looking at that a little bit and I know we, so the so the women basically just the high the headline is that the women's tennis team has mm-hmm. made it to their first ever elite eight. Mm-hmm. Um, they're right now they well they just had they had to beat the USC Trojans. I think they beat them four to one to advance to the elite eight. And right now the way it's set up, they would play Georgia. Um, if they played Georgia, they would play the next matchup between Florida State or Texas. Um, and you know that'll be that'll be really you know, really good matchup. It's kind of neat too, because I say they're in the elite eight, but all of the triangle schools are in the elite eight right now. You got state Duke and Carolina. Now Duke and Carolina are actually have to play each other to go and advance to the final four, if you will. And states on the other end of the bracket, but it's kind of neat to even see you've got four out of the eight teams are from the ACC and three of them are right here in the triangle in our backyard. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Well, it just it just shows again how how uh, I mean you mentioned even that we would have to play Florida State, so you go, man, like you know, okay, maybe AC is a little bit of powerhouse of women's tennis, you know, something. Yeah, think about. you could you could get three out of four teams in the final four for the from the ACC. You could have State, Florida State, and Duke or Carolina. Crazy, it's, that's pretty about. pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, and then and then the other sport we really wanted to mention, obviously baseball. I mean, holy smokes, folks! I mean, to go yeah. from literally last week not even getting one vote in the AP poll to now being the 24th ranked team in the country. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, we're going to definitely be uh, having an episode here soon, breaking down baseball, but I mean, holy smokes, what a turnaround. And I mean, absolutely thrilled so far. Just got to keep this thing rolling. So that's, that's a big thing. And I saw that, you know, I saw that they had won. I think the the stat was that state's baseball team. I think you mentioned they started out four and nine. Mm -hmm. They've won 22 out of their last 27 games. And they just swept um, Pitt, which I think was Pitt was 16, I think is what their rank was. They were. And they the last game, the last game they just played, they won 10-1, to 1, I think. Was it 10-1 to 1 or 10-3? to 3, I think it's 10-1. 10-3. 10-3, mm-hmm. okay. And um, they had 10 runs on 11 hits, and mm-hmm. five were home runs. Wow. And two were from Terrell Tatum, mm-hmm. who had a big weekend. But I'll tell you what, the biggest, the biggest week was actually Johnny Butler. 
that dude was named ACC Player of the Week. He had, um, you know, he's at, he's he's batting uh, 500 or last week. At least I don't, I don't know if that's his average or his weekly just this past week. Mm-hmm. But man, State has just been on a roll, especially at you know at bat. And if they can just make sure the hit the uh, pitchers are squared away, and they've had a few of their you know few of the pitchers really turn out for them in a big way. Um, recently, if they can just if they can just figure you know make sure they are you know slowly not slowly just progressing um, healthily, um, they're they're a troublesome team for a lot of players. Like they may be the hottest team in the ACC right now. Don't take the foot off the gas. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, so pretty much to kind of lay the lines in terms of what what's kind of left over. So obviously, state hosts Florida State this weekend. State already did announce, if you don't know already, that they are going to be increasing capacity. So there's no uh, excuse at all for yeah for, for Doke to not be sold out this weekend. So that first starts on Friday at 630. And if we beat Florida State, uh, win at least two out of three, then you're, we're locked in as a top four team heading into ACC uh, a tournament, which is huge Man, in I terms of wait. scheduling. So with that being said, we're actually going to go into an interview right now with our NC State sailing team. So you guys will really enjoy it, a live deep diving in. So here we go. Before we start the interview, I just wanted to put a full disclosure out there that Olivia Gregg, the women's captain for the sailing team, was a part of this interview and was included in the interview uh, with head coach Dana Magliola and co-captain Scott Harris. But due to audio issues discovered after the interview was completed, uh, we were not able to include her responses in this interview. So we do apologize for this inconvenience but hope that you all enjoy the interview thank you so much all right well fact nation thank y'all so much for tuning in we are here with uh, three members of the nc state sailing team so we got the two co- uh, co-captains we got uh, uh scott harris and olivia Gregg, and then we got the head coach uh dana magliola thank y'all so much for joining us today yeah, thanks for having us coach dana we'll, we'll get to you so where are you from originally then one kind of ask for you you know being the head coach uh you know did you i'm, I'm assuming more likely you sailed in college and where was that at? Yeah, so I'm uh, originally from Charleston, South Carolina. Love it. And uh, actually went to undergrad at University of Virginia and, and did not sail for the university at that point. Their sailing program was not really a thing, although they have gotten together uh, in the past few years. Um, but yeah, sailing in high in college, I'd go home and do some sailing in Charleston and then you know got involved uh, here in Raleigh about eight, eight and a half years ago. Uh, started started coaching the program here and here we are today. So perfect. So, so, I mean, so speaking of, so I mean, since you've been here for eight and a half years, so how has the team kind of progressed? Like, you know, how, you know, how, like, what would you say the biggest maybe changes have been from maybe when you first came on to where it is now? Sure. So one of the neat things about the sailing program here is it's the oldest club sport on campus. So it started in 1954 and they started racing in 1973. So there's a legacy here. Um, but it hasn't always been the most organized group. And when I started uh, in the fall of 2012, you know, we had a roster of about 10 folks, uh, some of whom had experience, uh, all of whom wanted to compete and wanted to start to build a program here. Mm-hmm. And over the, you know, the few years after that, we started to grow the roster, compete more, uh, more rigorous practices, and really that kind of all-in mentality to build the program. Mm-hmm. Uh, really helped us build a foundation to the point where, you know, we were out recruiting and, and a couple of years in and starting to, to really bring people to Raleigh to sail and go to school. So. Yeah. So I definitely, I definitely got to ask about that. So, I mean, uh, so what would you say? Cause I mean, you know, definitely when you think of, you know, like a club team per se, you think of, you know, somebody comes on campus, their freshman year, like, Hmm, what can I do? And then they go, Oh, look, I can join the sailing team. But I mean, you're talking about like literally recruiting. So, I mean, you know, would you say that there's a balance between the two? Like, you mean, can somebody come up freshman year and be like, Hey, I want to go on the sailing team. I mean, and also too, like how, how much would you say, how many people are recruited and how many people are, you know, just joining right off the cuff? One of the best things about uh, recruiting on campus for new folks is you know, when we go to RecFest out on Miller Fields, you see the span of people and you see a big NC State sale mm-hmm. above the whole crowd. So we get a lot of people that way who are interested in learning to sail. You know, they grew up with a little bit of sailing experience. Um, they sailed competitively and somehow didn't know that we had a program. Uh, that happened a lot in the past. It hasn't happened, happened much recently. Okay. Um, so we get people in the, in that way and, you know, they come in through the club and learn. 
And then we've started recruiting from, you know, folks that we know that are sailing in high school. High school sailing is a very competitive uh, group as well and pretty active. Mm -hmm. And really starting to, to tell folks, you know, if you want to study engineering or STEM, you want to go to school in a great place like Raleigh, and you want to compete at a high level in college sailing, you know, states your your thing. And, and so that's kind of been the, the approach. Wow. Okay. And and then, so what would you guys say for the most part? So, I mean, like, you know, one of the big things which I saw was, I mean, your roster is pretty lengthy. There's a, there's a lot, a lot of people on the roster. So, you know, I wanted to kind of ask, like, you know, how is the team formatted? You know, because I know like you just like, you know, here you got you got two captains and Scott and Olivia. And so um, you just kind of want to know kind of a little bit about how the team is formatted. And then also too, like I know that when you guys compete, typically you guys compete in pairs, usually on, on, a, on a sailboat. There's usually two people on there. So so I mean, how is that kind of formatted? Just, you know, kind of the whole general format from a, you know, not competing to a competing. Yeah, you want to do co-ed yeah. women's? So um, we have a co-ed and women's team. We're all one team, but we come we compete in different events. So like you said, our roster is usually pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, even though this is kind of a weird year, we have a pretty big roster and that kind of lets us cover a bunch of different bases. And so um, like if you look at our schedule every season, we have really, really competitive events that we go to and then we have more developmental events. And so having a big roster allows us to kind of have this depth where we can send developmental sailors to developmental events and then our most competitive sailors to um, competitive events and then it also gives us like that bandwidth to send a women's team as well because um, women's sailing and college sailing is more on the rise and there's more and more women's events every year and so it kind of gives us more of a flexibility to like do more events and so we actually had our draft like we have this draft that we do for events each fall and spring and so we have a crazy schedule for the fall mm -hmm. and knowing that we have a big roster to fill those events, it just elevates the program that much more. Like we have three or four trips to new England in the fall planned. We have a trip to Wisconsin and then that's on top of all of our normal events around the Southeast. Wow. Um, so that, that big roster definitely allows us to um, like get our name out there. And the more events we go to like our, you know, NC state shows up on, the score sheet, which is good for recruiting and just getting our name out there. Mm -hmm. So, what, so I know that you know you guys were saying that the, the NC State Sailing is one of the oldest club teams that NC State has, and so I mean, would you say compared to maybe out like you I mean all colleges that have sailing teams that I mean, I mean, are you guys pretty old? I mean, or is, are, are are a lot of them pretty much newer? Or I mean, are have have most colleges out there had sailing teams for quite some time? So, you know, college sailing started in like 1870 something at Yale. Wow. And uh, a lot of programs, you know, in the Ivy Leagues and some of those sort of older colleges in the Mid Atlantic and New England. But college sailing, as we know it, started in like the 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. where you had a lot more programs, um, conferences developing the same way you have the SEC and the ACC. And, um, I'd say over the probably the past 10 or 15 years, you've seen it become very similar to uh, other sports with scheduling and like, again, like we talked about recruiting. Um, there are probably about 250 colleges that field a sailing team. And of that, about 40 of them, 45 of them are varsity programs in their athletic department. And others are club teams that run the gamut from uh, some folks call us like a super club, a coached, well-organized club to, you know, four people getting together to go sailing and they start a team uh, and everything in between. Wow. Okay, uh -huh. man. Yeah. So, uh, and I mean, whether you're a club or a varsity, I mean, do you, you compete against each other or is it, or is it, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, um, so the next thing, which I was, I mean, you were talking about kind of conferences and, you know, kind of who you're competing against. So, you know, one of the things I was seeing is that, so you guys are part of the South Atlantic uh, Intercollegiate Sailing Association. So kind of what are some of the schools that make up that conference? And then, uh, you know, I, 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 cause I did see there were some local schools on the part of that association as well. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, SESA is basically like a combination of, the SEC and the ACC for like college basketball and mm -hmm. football. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the big players are um, like the Florida schools. So Florida, Florida State, 
Miami. Um, and then you get some like more oddball schools that aren't as big in the other sports like Jacksonville University and College of Charleston is probably the best team in our conference. And um, uh, like even UNC has a team and Duke, UNCW. And so a lot of those coastal ACC schools are who we compete against on a conference level. And then um, we compete around the nation. So um, the up, like NISA is like the New England. That would be, I guess, like the Big East and the Ivy League, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. Um, that's like the Harvards and the Yale and MIT. And so we kind of see a wide range of schools. And it's cool because some of them, like at some events that we'll go to, like the Florida Georgia football game will be going on. And mm -hmm. we'll, like we'll have an event in Jacksonville and we'll be right down the river from the Florida Georgia game. So like we'll be paying attention to that too. And then like, we have college sailing and college football going on, which is pretty cool. It's a little crazy. So if, if like an NC State fan, for example, wanted to go to one of your events, so typically what would they see? You know, I mean, like how many teams usually compete? Uh, and I mean, you know, just what's the kind of overall format of a, an event that takes place? So, so we've, we've really encouraged folks to come out and spectate. You know, we've been holding regattas in Raleigh, uh, organized, promoted regattas since 2015. Mm -hmm. And we've always reached out to the student base, to fans, to alumni. Uh, from the shore, you can watch. It may not be obvious what's going on, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty good viewing. <laughs> And when we do have an event, uh, one of the neat things is we have people on the team who aren't competing at the, at the event mm -hmm. will usually be shoreside to talk about what's going on with fans and explain things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the most accessible sport just because, you know, all of the home fleet, you know, we sail on home fleet boats. They all have an NC State logo. Mm -hmm. So it's very confusing as to which one's NC State. Uh, but once you kind of get it and you've got someone telling you what's going on, it's a great sport to watch. And as a regatta goes on, if it's close and scores are online and live, mm -hmm. you know, it can become a real nail biter. Hmm. So, so that's interesting. So I actually didn't know that. So you actually, so, so the people that come compete, compete on NC state boats. So you guys don't bring your boats with you to events. Yeah, thank God. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Well, just cause I mean, it's just kind of hard to imagine like, you know, like, UNC or, you know, some like that, like some other school competing on some other school's boats. It's interesting. And for every event that we go to, like the host venue, like they have the boat. So like a, like a school can't host unless they have the boat. And you'd be surprised, like most schools in say so do have enough boats to host like certain events. Like, um, like at NC State, we have eight FJs, which is so we can have eight teams. But at a powerhouse like Charleston, they have 18 FJs and 18 420s. And so they hold nationals there probably like once every 10 years or so, maybe even more. Um, and yeah, so like that's where our conference champs was this year where we qualified. And like um, every every venue is different and they all have different, they're all FJs and 420s, but each school is capable of, of hosting most of them. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, like, what would you guys say? So especially for like, uh, for you, you know, Scott and Olivia, so what would you say your typical weekly schedule is like you know how often do you guys practice i'm assuming you probably have you know one event you know during the weekend like you know how do you guys kind of balance everything overall just you know kind of give us your typical week per se and a lot of weekends like we'll be sending like in a normal year we'll be sending multiple teams out like across the country per weekend like there's i know for our schedule in the fall there's one weekend where we'll have three events and we'll have one group of four or five going to new england a group of four or five in Wilmington and a group of four or five at like Navy or something. And so it can get pretty busy on the weekends. Um, and so, well, yeah, like Olivia said, we do this season, we did Mondays and Friday practices. And then we always do Thursday night meetings, usually in person, they were on zoom mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. this season, but it can get pretty busy for like a five or six week span when regattas are going on and then we're usually so in the fall we'll practice pretty much right when we get to school mm -hmm. and we'll go all the way until thanksgiving and then in the spring we'll usually take january off and then start middle of february and then since we made nationals this year we'll be going all the way until early june so that's the nice thing about sailing especially like in say so we can sail all year round mm -hmm. and there's a fall and a spring season the spring season is a little more important but um it's definitely nice to have fall and spring season. Okay. Love it. Awesome. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, cause that's, that's one of the biggest things I know from, from my time working with the football team, that's the toughest thing is really being a student athlete and really being able to balance both sides of that. And I know that from looking at the roster, it looks like there's a good amount of like engineers uh, there as well, which I'm like, Phew. I mean, balancing engineering and, and being, doing a full sport as well. That's, that's, that's a lot. So, so one of the, one of the things that I think we really brag on with our program is that, you know, our student athletes are taking very challenging majors and, you know, our team grade point average is usually around a three, three or a three, five, somewhere in that range. Wow. Um, we regularly have uh, student athletes that are ICSA college sailing, all, uh, all academic team, uh, SESA all academic team. So we're really proud of just how well our, our student athletes perform in the classroom in addition to keeping that very rigorous schedule during the year. So mm -hmm. absolutely. No kidding. That's, well, that's amazing. Three, 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 five. That's, that's amazing. So, uh, so hats off to y'all for that, for sure. Um, so kind of getting into, you know, learning a little bit more about sailing. So one of the things I was really interested about was, as I know from a sailing perspective, there's, I mean, there are Olympic teams that do, that do compete in Olympics for sailing. Um, so what is kind of the overall general, life after you know college you know sailing in terms of like professional level and olympic level like you know what what's kind of out there what kind of options are out there um you know just kind of give us a little bit 411 i guess about that so it kind of depends on what you do in college sailing um you can do as much sailing as you want or as little sailing as you want after college mm -hmm. um at the very top of the line a lot of the u.s sailing olympic team has college sailors on it um like for example the so one of the classes in the Olympics is called the 470, and they're one of the um, one of the team members on that 470 team went to Eckerd College, who we compete against pretty regularly. And so, um, like another example, like a Harvard skipper a few years ago, Annie Hagar, she uh, also did a 470 campaign for the Olympics. So that's a possibility for some. Um, some of them get out of the, the two-handed sort of bees into catamarans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have college sailors that go on to compete in different classes like a NACRA, um, uh, other kinds of other kinds of boats. And and quite honestly, we have Olympians who are still doing college sailing. So when we line up uh, at the College of Charleston on the line, like we're right up against uh, people that competed in Rio. And yeah. They're out there in the mix, and uh, which is great. Sometimes we beat them, you know. Yeah, our, um, in Charleston a few weeks ago when we had our conference champs, um, her name is Paris. I'll just call her. Her name is Paris Hankin, and she's she, really good. She sailed for she sails for College of Charleston. She originally started at Charleston, I think, in like 2015. Took two years off. She campaigned and she competed in Rio in the Olympics, and then came back to school and is still sailing for Charleston. And so wow. every once in a while see an olympia in our water which is definitely pretty fun to, to see that well i mean yeah you know you never that's one thing that's maybe different is you never see nfl players that you know are also you know playing in college as well so that's that's definitely different so that's i can't I, that's that's amazing that's really really cool and then you know so one of the things too when i was kind of doing some research about sailing as well as i saw that there was uh, uh it's called the america's cup which is in uh, auckland uh, new zealand and really did want to kind of ask you know overall kind of what that is because it seems like a very un unique event because i mean i mean first of all you know it's america's cup and in new zealand so just wanted to kind of ask a little bit about that kind of what that is really yeah so the america's cup um it actually rotates so whichever country wins it gets to host it for the next cycle hmm. um the best way to describe the america's cup is kind of like it's a weird thing because it's in a different class of boat each cycle and it's every three years, I believe. Um, and so most of the time college sailors aren't going into the America's cup, like out of college, even the best. Mm -hmm. um, the America's cup is more for like established sailors. I wouldn't say older, but um, usually the people competing in the America's cup have already won a world championship or a North American championship in their like separate class of boat. And so, um, like, for example, the American skipper, his name is Jimmy Spittle. He has won multiple world championships and other classes of boats. And then um, the U.S. America's Cup team says, OK, this guy's qualified. We're going to have him drive our boat. And so yeah. you get someone like Ben Ainsley from the U.K. Yeah, he was a gold medal winner in laser single handed. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's actually it's kind of like the World Cup for um, for soccer. Like um, the World Cup, it's every four years, um, and it's it's like countries competing against each other. It's it's not really like like the EPL or La Liga. It's like where the countries come together and really compete for like that country, like winning the world status regatta, I guess. And so mm-hmm. um, a few years ago, the U.S. Um, I call it the greatest comeback in sports oh, history. The the U.S. was down to New Zealand. Um, nine or it was eight races to one, I believe, and you needed to win nine races to win the event. And we were down eight to one. And Jimmy Spittle came back. We won however many straight races to win that event, nine to eight. And then, so because America or because the United States won it, we got to choose where it was hosted. And so we chose Bermuda. It came back to Bermuda, and then New Zealand won it. And that's why it was in Auckland this year. Interesting. Um, yeah, that's kind of like the very tippy top of sailing, like post-Olympic life. You know, there are some classes, though, like the America's Cup. There are some sort of sailing races that college sailors do get more actively uh, involved in sooner. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like There's the Volvo Ocean Race, which was one time called the Whitbread Around the World Classic. Now it's called the Ocean Race. But essentially, it's a multi-stop, multi-team, around-the-world race on 70-foot, you know, carbon fiber yachts. And over the past two sessions of that, and I think that happens every couple of years, too, mm-hmm. um, you know, you have college sailors uh, in particular, uh, two sailors, Charlie Enright and Mark Toll, who sailed at Brown University, which is a, a great sailing program. You know, they built a campaign around one of these boats and, and sailed competitively uh, in both races, you know, winning several stages. I think that the, they finished the overall event in second, the first go round, but you know, there is a future for college sailors in the broader sailing world. I mean, even like on our level, like, um, like I'm no, we're not in a, at an Olympic level by any means. But like my dad and I are campa- uh, campaigning for the Lightning World Championships right now. And so, um, my dad grew up sailing a boat called Lightning it, it, or Lightnings. It's a three-person boat, and like I'm going home this weekend for practice, and um, we're campaigning for the World Championships. And so, like. There's all different routes that college sailors can take, and there's a bunch of different classes, and the, the options are pretty much limitless. And then there's big boats too. Like I, I prefer smaller dinghy sailing; it's closer racing. But then there's also bigger boat, like keel boat options, where it's longer distance races, and there's tons of different stuff you can do with it. Awesome! Wow. Okay. Well, appreciate all that insight for sure. I mean, that that's fascinating stuff, and I love the comeback. Nothing, you know, it's, it's always it's always a great comeback story. So that's awesome. Um, so, you know, one to kind of, you know, one of the things too, when I was looking at, uh, y'all's websites that y'all, uh, said that you guys were trying to foster an appreciation and engagement in the sport of sailing. So I wanted to kind of ask, like, you know, is there anything in terms of events that you guys do, um, outside of practices and, and, uh, um, events themselves to really try and promote, uh, the sport, you know, trying to get more people involved and interested in sailing, maybe even outside of NC state. Yeah, so in uh, in 2016, 2015, I think, mm-hmm. we started doing uh, community sailing during the summers, uh, community dinghy racing, college-style dinghy racing, open to the public. Nice. And what we do is we basically, one night a week, we hold s- small, informal regattas, and anybody who wants to come down can come out, no experience necessary, any age. And usually we have several uh, student-athletes who are in town during the summer, help to run the program make the sport accessible, pair up with people that maybe don't know what they're doing in a boat. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to introduce, uh, I think our, before COVID, before we had to call it off for last summer, uh, we had had almost a little bit over 700 people had been through that program Mm -hmm. uh, in our community, which is just one of our things we're we're most happy about. Um, Yeah. Also do stuff like outside of Salem too. We're a pretty close team. And so when you join the club, there's like, Earlier this year, like we went like paintballing and you know, we'll go bowling every once in a while. And mm-hmm. there's also like this sort of community that we've built. Um, the club has shrunk a little bit through COVID, but during a normal year, like there's, there's like a lot of non sailing events that the club will do. And then when you get, if you do end up joining the race team, there's, there's just team events. And so we try to include other stuff to make it fun for those that are just getting into sailing. And there's, Especially if you join the club, we try to make it to where there's really no pressure of like if you don't have any experience, like go have a great time bowling and then someone will teach you how to sail. Yeah. 
So how can, uh, so, so, I mean, just for curious too, I mean, for those viewers who are interested, so, so how can they, you know, see, you know, when these summer outings are, that they could come uh, join you guys for sailing in the summer. So we, we put everything on our website, uh, go.ncsu.edu backslash sailing, mm -hmm. uh, follow us on any one of our social medias, usually sail pack or NC state sailing. Okay. Um, and we promote, we promote them pretty regularly. Um, uh, the last before COVID, our last summer sailing got picked up on a uh, things to do for free in Raleigh blog, and we went from having like 20 people a night show up to having 50 people a night show up. Uh, so they've gotten popular, and I think that we uh, do a pretty good job promoting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When we have these opportunities. Wow. And and so I mean, you know, curious too, you know, especially you know with it being such an odd year, and you did mention you know COVID a couple times. So I mean. How has it kind of, how has COVID really affected y'all's team? You know, maybe, maybe your process, you know, have you had to, you know, change, you know, what you're doing at all due to the global pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. We have. You got to practice and Scott and Olivia accosted you with a thermometer, yes. you know, yes. taking your temperature on the forehead and oh. you had to sign in for contact trace, you know, masks on masks at practice. And this is all throughout college sailing too. You know, the programs that were lucky enough to compete and practice this year, we're all going through a lot of protocols to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we were considered a low risk sport, but that still meant lots of, lots of safety precautions. Yeah. And yeah. before regatta, for example, you know, we all, the travel squad has to test within 72 hours of the start of competition. You know, you have to get confirmation that everybody's compliant before you can even compete. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it definitely affected every, every sport a little different. So that's, uh, that's good to see though. You guys are still strong on that. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to kind of review too, is I know that, uh, you know, looking back at, uh, y'all season so far, so you finished third out of over 30 plus teams, uh, in the conference, uh, for the 2021 spring season. So definitely congrats on that. I'm sure you guys are thrilled about that and super excited about that. So, uh, you know, just wanted to kind of ask, you know, overall, so first of all, I mean, how exciting, you know, was it to, uh, you know, to get the news that you guys qualified for, uh, nationals, uh, in Annapolis, Maryland from June 7th to June 8th. And then, you know, how long have you guys had that, you know, set as a goal? You know, like, you know, well, how long did I guess you guys, you know, say having having your mind that, you know, this is an achievable goal that, you know, we want to go for NC State Sailing's first ever national championship uh, competition? Well, to answer your first question, we knew um, like we were all there, like the moment we found out. And so yeah. the way our, our regattas are structured is so there's an A and a B division. And so um, Olivia and I actually sailed together and we sailed an A division. And so we finished our last race and we were waiting for our B division to finish. And as soon as B division um, crossed the line, we knew like the points going into that last race. And so we went crazy on the water. Yeah, yeah it was insane. And, um, and, and it was a nail biter. I mean, we knew going in. So day one, we were up on Miami and USF and we had to beat them. Uh, to qualify for the, there's only three berths to national finals for our whole conference. Uh, and we were in third on Saturday evening and we got there Sunday morning. Uh, we're up seven on Miami. We're up nine on USF. So we knew we had to keep them at bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we put distance between us and Miami. We left them behind and USF just started chipping away at our lead throughout the day, race after race. Uh, and quite honestly, for like the last four races, I couldn't even watch. Like I had to have someone <laughs> describing to me what was happening because I, I couldn't handle it. Oh. Uh, you know, it, it was it was close. I love that. The good, the good guys won in the end. That's Spoiler right. Alert. That's right. That's right. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, to think, I mean, you guys have been around for, you know, was it now 70 years and to go to the first ever national title this year during a crazy year like this. I mean, that's that's remarkable to say the least. So so definitely. Uh, um, you know, definitely congrats on that. So I do got to ask, you know, now that you guys have made it to a national championship, which I'm sure was probably one of the larger goals that you guys had for a team. So what's kind of the next next goal on the list, you know, besides maybe the obvious one of winning a national title? Is there kind of like an in-between at all? There actually are more goals we're looking towards. And so mm -hmm. um, we've qualified this year, but we're also kind of looking towards the long term, especially once Olivia and I graduate. Like we want NC State failing to be at nationals every year. Um, and it's it's very attainable. Um, the recruiting has been stepping up a lot. 
Um, but so our long-term goal is definitely to have like a continuation of the program and not like a fall off at all. And then um, kind of a shorter term goal is we're trying to get into this thing called cross regional status. And so college sailing the structure is kind of changing on us as we're sort of on our way out, but um, there's the way they've structured it is like, there's these, this label called cross regional teams that um, going forward are going to be like the elite teams. And so we're kind of like right on the border of that. And um, kind of like the power five conferences, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, those schools that are like the, probably those top 40 something varsities, you know, uh, not a whole lot of club programs. Hmm. Um, but, but with us qualifying for nationals and um, if we have a strong fall season, it's very likely that we'll become cross regional and that only helps in the recruiting process. And so we're trying not to get one hit wonder if that makes sense. Like we're trying to keep it going and um, we're, we are, we're bringing back all of our strong sailors back here. And so we have a very good chance to qualify again um, next spring. And then hopefully after that, we're bringing in more sailors to hopefully keep qualifying each year. Cause there's definitely like, if you look at the scores from nationals at every year, there's, or 12 teams that are there. It's like Alabama and the college football playoff. Like there, like there are teams like that that are at nationals almost every year. And we definitely like our goal is to become one of those teams. And one of the, you know, we've got a lot of talent that's come in over the past two years also. And you know, our strongest recruiting class uh, from this past year was our women's team. Uh, you know, so our women's team, we started in 2013, 2013 or 2014, um, you know, to field a women's team. And right now, y'all are talented. Yes, yeah. When y'all were just, I mean, they were points away from nationals for women's this year. So it's been, it's been a banner year. Um, wow, that's awesome. And so, you know, kind of, uh, you know, one more question I kind of had to kind of learn about, about the team a little bit. So, so what would you say maybe is the toughest challenge that maybe, a, you know, a sale, you know, a, a, a you know, person, a part of the sales sailing team might encounter that maybe others don't, you know, maybe per se, you know, is there something, you know, challenge wise that maybe is a little bit unique about the sport or being a part of the team that maybe is a little different than other sports? I, I actually think every single person on the team has a different challenge. And I say that because we have a huge range of scale on our team. Um, like our top skippers on our team have been sailing their whole lives and um, those challenges might be more like results based at events and psychological. Yeah. Like beating certain teams and, and doing well. And then other challenges for like the more developmental sailors are just like having the confidence to compete at practice with more experienced people there. And mm -hmm. yeah. I think you could get a different like challenge from every sailor on the team and the, like good challenges, like trying to overcome, like, you know, being new to sailing sailing against more experienced sailors and just trying to like break into sailing, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think it, Olivia kind of hits on it. Like our team culture is really inclusive. Um, you know, we kind of have this philosophy of, of no macho, which basically means, you know, you have to be comfortable saying, I don't know, saying I'm, you know, I'm cold or this is too windy, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it happens to be, or I'm, or my head's not in the game. I've got academic challenges right now. Um, and you know, having that kind of family environment to pick up when you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one of the best parts that, that makes it kind of that community that we've built around the team. So definitely the, you know, the one last thing I definitely wanted to make sure that we kind of end on. So I know that you guys are in the middle right now of uh, of uh, fundraising for uh, uh, your movement to nationals. I know that, you know, due to COVID that uh, you guys haven't been able to get any funding from the university. So you're having to pay it through through donations and out of pocket so you know wanted to kind of you know for for the viewers who who are wanting to donate you know to 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 that uh mission so what what's what's the best way that they can donate and you know maybe where are some places that they can you know find that they can donate to the cause sure you know the, yeah like you said this year has been challenging with the university university supports us pretty well yeah. during normal times but travel and lodging have, have been out this year so we've had to bootstrap it um you know our website is the first place to go uh, to, to find out what we're planning to do. You know, we're spending money on travel and lodging and training, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get ready for this, the deep end of the pool here. And uh, so that's the first place to start. And we've been really, you know, really uh, lucky. There's been a lot of generous support. Great. Uh, family, friends. We've even gotten donations from sort of other club teams who are excited to see a club 
make it into the into the finals. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's uh, some ambition there. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Well, thank y'all so much again for tuning in. Best of luck to y'all at nationals. Definitely, uh, you know, do your best. I mean, definitely, uh, you know, win it all if you can. Hey, we'll, we'll have no issue with that. Uh, as no Saint fans. We have no issue with that if y'all want to bring back a title. Trust me. Um, so thank y'all again for your time. Really appreciate it. Best of luck to y'all and stay safe. Thank you so yeah, much, Lee. Thanks for having us. Thank y'all. All right, Wolfpack Nation, hope y'all enjoyed the interview as much as we did. I mean, again, it's just so cool, to, again, to really just get some insight into the sports that maybe a lot of teams didn't really – or a lot of people didn't really know about, you know. But, I mean, again, just just like we were saying earlier, I mean, teams are really shining. And, again, for this team to literally make it to its first ever national uh, uh, tournament, I mean, it just speaks volumes. And over and they've been around for over 70 years, 70 years, and first time there. So, again, it just shows the trajectory for this team. So, go to www.salepack.org. Org. Again, that's www.salepack.org, and you could donate through there. And uh, so, again, hope you all really enjoyed that, and thank you all so much for, for your uh, kindness and helping them towards their goal. So with that being said, again, thank you all so much again for tuning in. Please make sure, again, if you haven't already, subscribe to us by hitting the button in the bottom right-hand corner. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at Tuffy Talk Now. And uh, please feel free to reach out to us and like our, like this video if you enjoyed it. Check our other ACC content. And we'll see you all next week. And uh, hopefully you have another big week coming up here for state fans. So thank you all so much again for tuning in. As always, go Pack.